Hello everybody, it's Doomsday Danny, and I am here to give you some tips for how you can survive the Holocaust. If you follow me, I will give you some tips that might just save you one day. Welcome to VBR. This is Danny, and you have found my Doomsday Show. This is the place where I share the information with you that I've collected from multiple sources. You will find links to all my resources in the description below. If you have not done it yet, please like and subscribe to my channel. You should also consider sharing my links with your friends and family members. You may help them find the piece of information that they will need to save their lives in the event of a nuclear attack or some other disaster. Remember, knowledge is power and the more you learn, the more powerful you are. The more information you can accumulate, the better prepared you will be to react when a nuclear attack does occur. I remember the fall of the USSR and the Berlin Wall coming down. I remember just waiting for the day the bombs would begin falling. Nuclear annihilation was a real possibility throughout my childhood. Now all of a sudden, it's like I've been teleported back in time and Russia is pointing nuclear weapons at our heads and threatening us once again. I've decided to start this channel so that I can help you start to do what you can do to get your family prepared for a nuclear attack. I'm not some survivalist or hardcore prepper. I'm not wealthy. I'm not affiliated with any government, any government nor private institution that handles any sort of emergency response. I'm just a single mom realizing that I need to do what I can to help prepare my family in case the ghosts of the Cold War come back to get us after all. I'm not prepared for a nuclear war. I bet most of you aren't either. I'm just going to start at square one by educating myself, and I'm asking you to join me. I learned a lot about emergency planning and response back in grad school, and I'm very good at research. I'm going to share my research with all of you. Links to my citations will be in the descriptions. If you can do it, please do your own research too. If you have the abilities and the access to the materials, do everything you can to educate yourself. Um, if you don't have access to these resources, you can always reach out to me. Please send me your questions or any ideas you have for topics. And I will try to make a video that, you know, at least answers your questions for you. And I'll share any links to any information I find so that you can read them for yourself. Um, this actually will help me learn more by researching your questions. So please don't hesitate to reach out. My email is survive doomsday disasters at gmail.com. I also have a website and there's a link on my channel banner and a description in the video. If you go to this website, you can sign up for my free newsletter and you will also find my affiliate links. All of the products and programs I've included on my page are for services or products that I think can provide solid value for folks. I will keep adding items as I locate new things, and if you feel any of these offers would be good for you or your family, please consider using my link to purchase them from. I get a small commission from each order and it helps support this work. Please don't purchase anything unless you really feel it will help you though. So I'm beginning this series by going through the U.S. Armed Forces Nuclear, Biological, and Chemical Survival Manual. It was written by Dick Couch. And we used this book in my grad school course. So if you would like to pick up a copy of it for yourself, please check out the affiliate link on my website. It's also in the description below. Um, on the last show, we discussed the main components of a family emergency plan. So if you've not watched that video yet, you may want to check it out after you finish this one. So we've covered that a family emergency plan needs to provide for communication needs, supplies, and include a rally point that the whole family knows about so that you can get reunited in the event a disaster strikes and you are not all at home together. Um, checklists are important for staying organized while making and managing your emergency response plan. Please click the link in the description to email me and I will send you a free copy of my checklists so that you can use them to adapt um, for your own family in your own situation. And they'll help you start building your emergency plan. Um, there's no 
cost for these checklists. I'm just handing them out to folks. They're what I'm using, and I'd love to share them with you. Like I said, just um, you can also subscribe to my newsletter on my website, and I will send them to you that way. But you can also just shoot me an email at survivedoomsdaydisasters at gmail.com and say, Hey, Danny, I'd really like... Um, I'd really like those checklists, please, and I'll, I'll get them right over to you. There's no, no obligations at all. Um, so what kind of supplies do you really need in the case of a nuclear holocaust? Um, I'm sure this list could be absolutely massive, if you, as you can imagine. But if you're like me, you m might just find yourself on a limited bu budget. Does that just mean that we're completely doomed? Mm, I don't think so. Not quite. I think it just means that we must make more strategic decisions about what to spend our limited resources on. So I will try to help you build your needs and wants list and figure out the best ways that you can begin to acquire the most necessary survival items first. So what should your disaster supply kit include? That actually depends a lot on how big your family is, where you're located, and what needs each family member has. All family disaster kits need to contain a few base items and according to Couch, disaster preparedness experts indicate that many families preparing for an emergency typically underestimate the amount of water they will need and often fail to make adequate provisions to have enough needed medication, prescription medication on hand. I think it is important to consider that point. So how much water is enough water? You need at least one gallon of water per person per day and you need to keep it stored in some kind of a container that's not going to break and it's not going to leak. So in the case of a nuclear attack the minimum amount of time you need to stay indoors is 72 hours. For me there are often five of us in my house. So the bare minimum water I should keep stored in my safe area is 15 gallons. That's one gallon per person per day for five people times three days. So 15 gallons. If I wanted to store a two week supply of water for my five people, now it goes up to 70 gallons of water. That's probably why a lot of people underestimate just how much water they need. I mean, even for five people, 70 gallons of water for two weeks sounds like a lot of water to me as I'm reading it, but at the same time, it's really not that much water. So we can't live very long without water. We can live a long time without food, but not very long without water. I can't stress to you how important it is that you have fresh water available. So the book also recommends um, enough prescription medication for at least a week or even more if you need to travel. But in the event of a nuclear strike, who knows if refills will even be available, right? Um, if you are on medication and a nuclear attack were to occur, how much of a supply of medication do you have? I mean, is it possible to discuss it with your doctor and try to get more of a stockpile so that you can have that on hand? I'm not sure that is even possible with some, you know, insurance plans. So I've actually flagged this topic in my notes and I'm going to do some more research and get more information on this topic for you guys because um, it seems kind of like a catch-22. I know, you know, my insurance won't pay for me to have several months of medication on stock in advance. so. I don't know how they recommend folks get around this one. Um, so the next thing you need is you also need food. So prepackaged foods with a long shelf life are optimal, obviously. Uh, don't forget a hand operated can opener for any canned food that you might have in your pantry. When you're putting away food, take into consideration anyone in the family that may have specific dietary needs like infants or the elderly or like my daughter is gluten-free, um, make sure you have enough of whatever they need on hand as well as whatever the basics are that you're keeping. Every household should also have a medical kit 
with basic first aid supplies and over-the-counter medications that could be useful. Things would include like Benadryl for allergies, Tylenol, Ibuprofen, Aleve, Excedrin, you know, some kind of gas medication, something for nausea, vitamins, supplements, anything else like that that you need that you would typically get, typically get over the counter. Um, definitely keep all of that kind of stuff on hand. Make sure you have all the clothing that you might need. So you need a change of clothes, rain gear, good shoes for every family member. Everyone should have like a hat, a coat, gloves, dry socks things like that. Um, make sure you have thermal blankets and sleeping bags. As a matter of fact, check out the description or my website to get a free emergency sleeping bag from Patriot Wholesale Club. They are affiliated today, so I will tell you more about them shortly. One thing that might be easy to forget is sanitary products for the females in the family. Planning ahead to make sure that you have those supplies on hand when you need them will help relieve a lot of stress. Um, I mean, when you find yourself in a situation and you need them and you don't have them, um, especially if we're facing a nuclear holocaust at the same time, would not be a good time to run out of those things. Trust me, I'm a lady, I know. So make sure you, you stock up. <laughs> um, you should have a cell phone available, but if there's an e impulse, it may, it may end up useless. A house phone is a better option. If you have both, of course, that's optimal. Each family member should have a printed list of emergency numbers, family contacts, doctor's numbers, anything like that. And this list should also be kept in each room of the house and also kept in your vehicle as well. Make sure you have candles and matches available, and you should also make sure that you have a good flashlight for each family member and lots of extra batteries. You should keep a radio, a battery-powered radio, and you're going to also need to have batteries on hand for that. Make sure that you have your car keys, cash, credit cards, jewelry, family photos, anything like that. Keep that all on hand. Um, you should keep your gas tank in your car as full as possible and any family documents or pictures should be kept in a waterproof fireproof locked box make sure that you keep copies of your will and any financial records in there as well and bank records um, camping and outdoor gear might be something good to work up to acquiring a tent, tarps, a compass, matches, plastic containers, a camp stove, anything like that's always good to keep on hand. Don't forget to include comfort items as well. Books, games, pictures, art supplies, musical instruments, things like that. Remember your electronics may or may not work, so go back to old school, you know, entertainment items. Um, so these are all great if you're home and stuff, but you should also keep in mind that you may have to evacuate and you may be in your car traveling. So you want to make sure your car is kept prepared as well. So you would want to have um, things like a bright flashlight, booster cables in case your battery dies, a fire extinguisher, a tire repair kit with a pump or something like fix the flat like an aerosol seal a leak type substance make sure you have a container to carry gas in you should have maps flares um you know other emergency signaling devices um really you should have this all the time but you'll especially need this stuff in an emergency and like i said earlier it's good to try and keep your tank topped off as much as possible. Don't remember to take all your survival manuals with you. Um, so I hope that this video has helped you start to think about the kind of supplies you and your family are going to need before and after disaster strikes. Even a little preparation is a hundred percent more than no preparation. So any preparation is better than nothing at all. 
After you make a plan and gather your first batch of supplies, you can keep refining your plan and adding to your supplies. Just get started and don't let the lack of perfection paralyze you before you even get anything done. Check out my next video and I will explain to you some of the procedures you need to consider and the variables you may need to consider based on where you are when a nuclear strike I'm sorry, when a nuclear strike takes place. Um, so the affiliate product I've selected for you today is from Patriot Wholesale Club. It is a tiny emergency sleeping bag and they're actually giving them away for free for a very limited time. Just check the link on my website or in my description below this video and you can get yours today. This company actually has a a bunch of other interesting survival products that you may feel inclined to um, look into as well. And I think these little sleeping bags are really great because they are about the size of a soda can. And I'm going to get several. I'm going to put one in my daughter's backpack, my purse. I'm going to put them in my car. Um, I'm going to put them on both floors of my house. I'm going to have them everywhere because they're tiny and they're cheap and they're great. Um, so if you get one and give it a shot, let me know what you think of it. Um, my email is survivedoomsdaydisasters at gmail.com. You can drop a comment below. So I selected this product because I think everyone could use this. And it's inexpensive enough to fit into anyone's budget. And let's be honest, once we have the first thing in our disaster supply kit, it's a lot easier to add the second and third. So if you want somewhere to start, here is a, a, a good place to start, perhaps, um, if you feel drawn to it. So if you feel it'll help you and your family, then, you know, please visit my website. And you can also find links to the book I'm using uh, for this video, for my reference material. And I guess that's it for today. So have a wonderful day. And if you've not done it yet, please like and subscribe to my channel. Share it with your friends and loved ones. This is Doomsday Danny from VBR signing off for tonight. Come back and we will be broadcasting until the Holocaust signs us off for good. Rest well, everyone. Danny, over and out.